Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today I'm tackling a vital topic in project management, risk. But guess what? I'm breaking it down in the easiest way possible. And trust me, you won't forget it. How? Well, I have got examples for every concept in risk management. They are like little stories that will make this whole topic stick in your mind like glue. But before we dive in, if you haven't subscribed yet, now is the time. Your support fuels our drive to bring you the most engaging and informative content possible. Now let's embark on this journey together where complex concepts turn into clear, unforgettable insights. Are you ready? Let's get started. When you start the planning process for a project, one of the first things you need to think about is what can go wrong? I know it sounds negative, but a good project manager knows this type of thinking is preventive. An important distinction to remember is that Risks are not the same as issues. Issues are uh, things you know you will have to deal with and may even have an idea of when exactly they will occur. Like uh, a team member schedule vacation or a big spike in the product demand around the holidays. Whereas risks are the events that might happen and you may not be able to tell when such as a uh, flu season hitting your team all at once or a key product component being on back order. To understand the whole risk management process, I'm going to take an example today and I will call it as road trip example. So try to remember this example till the end of this video. Imagine planning a road trip with friends where the risk might be a potential flat tire or getting lost along the way. So you prepare by carrying a spare tire and a GPS. While on the road trip, the GPS malfunctions and guides you to the dead end road. And the spare tire you bought is also flat. Now that's a serious issue that needs to be addressed to get back on the track. Now the question is that, how do you work towards resolving the unknown? It sounds like impossible. But don't worry, there are practical steps you can take. First of all, let's define risk. Risk is any unexpected event that can affect your project, for better or for worse. The PMBOK guide describes risk as an uncertain event or condition that if it occurs has a positive or negative effect on a project's objective. The key element of this definition is that the effect of the uncertainty, if it occurs, may be positive or negative on the objectives of the planned endeavor. There are two types of risk in project management, positive and negative risk. Positive risk, also known as an opportunity, refers to a potential future event or situation that if it occurs, could have a beneficial impact on the project's objectives. These risks offer opportunities for project advancement, improvement, or uh, gain. Negative risk, often termed as a threat, denotes a potential future event or circumstance that, if it occurs, could have an adverse impact on the project's objectives. These risks pose challenges or obstacles that might impede the project's progress result in uh, like increased cost, cause delays or affect the project's quality. Now, if we consider the same road trip example as earlier, let's try to think what could be the positive or negative risks in this scenario. Let's first talk about the positive risk. While the risk of getting lost exists, it might lead to discovering beautiful and scenic routes that were not originally planned. Embrace the opportunity to explore new landscapes and unexpected sites. A flat tire or a GPS malfunction might create an opportunity for the group to work together, fostering team bonding through problem solving and cooperation. Uh, let's say if our navigation tools fail, it could lead, uh, lead us to interacting with locals for directions, 
potentially resulting in cultural exchanges or discovering a hidden local gems that weren't on the original itinerary. Now, what could be the negative risk? Issues like a GPS malfunction or a flat tire could lead to delays in reaching the destination, obviously, potentially disrupting planned activities or accommodations or dealing with unexpected issues might cause frustration or stress among the travelers, affecting the overall enjoyment of the trip, uh, or risk like uh, running out of fuel or encountering a major mechanical issue might lead to unexpected expenses for refueling, repairs, or alternative transport arrangements. Now, it's time to understand the risk management processes. Risk management processes involves several steps that help identify, analyze, respond to, and monitor risk in project management. Let's try to understand each one of them in the easiest way possible. Very first process in risk, uh, very first process in risk management is risk identification. Imagine making a list of things that could go wrong in your project. This stop involves brainstorming and identifying all possible problems or uncertainties that might happen or that could happen. In our road trip example, uh, try to identify potential risk before the trip. In this case, potential risk might include a GPS malfunction, a flat tire, or getting lost due to wrong directions or running out of fuel. Now, the second process in project management is qualitative risk analysis. Think of this like assigning grades to the risk. You are figuring out how likely each problem is to occur and how much it could affect your project. Using simple ratings like low, medium or high. Now, in our road trip example, let's try to evaluate the identified risk by considering their probability and impact. For instance, we can rate the GPS malfunction as moderate probability and high impact as it can lead us to getting lost. Similarly, we can rate the flat tire to low uh, to moderate probability and moderate impact. There is a very moderate possibility that we can lost due to the wrong directions, but the impact of getting lost is obviously high. The probability of running out of fuel is very low as you can always keep checking when, you're, uh, when you have to refuel. But if this happens, then the impact of this problem is very high. Now, the third process in risk management is quantitative risk analysis. Instead of using general terms like low or high, this step uses numbers to measure how likely a risk is and how much it might impact your project. For instance, using percentages or monetary values. In our road trip example, let's try to assign numerical values to risk for a more quantitative analysis. For example, you might quantify the probability of the GPS malfunction as 50% and the impact as 80% based on a scale you create. Risk response planning is the fourth process under risk management. It's like making a game plan for each problem you have identified. You decide what you will do if each risk happens, whether you will try to stop it, minimize its impact, share the risk with someone else or just be ready to face it. Let's try to develop strategies to respond to the risk in our road trip example. What we will do if our GPS will malfunction? As a response, we can carry backup navigation tools like printed maps or a secondary GPS system. Let's say we have a flat tire. How would we respond to it? Just think about it. Like we can bring a spare tire, tools for changing it, and we can also consider having a roadside assistance contact. What you can do if uh, you got lost due to the wrong directions? 
we can actually plan alternate routes or have a backup method for navigation like asking locals for the directions where you want to go. To avoid running out of fuel, we can keep track of fuel levels and plan refueling stops in advance. Now, the last process in risk management is risk monitoring and controlling. It's like uh, watching over your list of problems irregularly. You check if any new risk pop up. See if the ones you expected are still a threat and take action to handle them if things change during your project. In our road trip example, we can continuously monitor the risk throughout the trip. Like we can check the GPS functionality periodically. We can also inspect the spare time, uh, spare tire to ensure that it's, a, it's in a good condition or not. We can always keep an eye on fuel levels and plan refueling stops accordingly. We can also try to be stay updated with alternative navigation options in case of GPS failure. So, this was all about the risk management processes. I hope these explanations and the given example will help you understanding this concept for your exam. From your exam perspective, there is one more concept that is very, very crucial is how to respond to positive or negative risk. Let's talk about posit, uh, positive risk response strategies first. Number one strategy is exploit or leveraging. This is like taking full advantage of a good situation when it happens in your project. For example, if you find an unexpected opportunity to finish your task more efficiently than planned, you might exploit it by using that time to work on additional project aspects or features. Then number two is enhance or enhancing. This response involves boosting the chances of a positive event happening. For example, you might enhance a positive risk by investing in additional resources or tech to increase the likelihood of, the, of achieving an earlier project milestone. Number uh, three is share or sharing. Sharing a positive risk means involving others to maximize its benefits or outcomes. For example, collaborating with another team or sharing knowledge and resources to capitalize on an unforeseen opportunity in your project. Now, the last and the fourth one is accept or accepting. Accepting a positive risk means acknowledging and allowing it to happen without taking any additional action because it's beneficial. For example, if a positive uh, risk occurs, such as finishing a task earlier than expected, you might accept it without taking any further changes to the project plan because it aligns with your project goals. So these responses aim to make the most of unexpected positive events by either fully utilizing them, increasing their likelihood, sharing their benefits or allowing them to occur without additional uh, intervention. Now let's talk about negative risk responses strategies. So in negative risk response strategy, the very first strategy is to avoid. This is like sidestepping or staying away from a potential problem in your project. For example, if there is a risk of using a new and untested technology that might cause delays, you might avoid it by sticking to a known or any reliable technology that you know. The second strategy that comes under this is to mitigate. Mitigating a negative risk involves lessening its impact or likelihood. For example, to mitigate the risk of a potential budget overrun, you might implement cost-cutting measures or find more economical alternatives. The third strategy is to transfer. Transferring a negative risk means shifting the impact to someone else or another party. For example, purchasing insurance for a potential equipment failure transfers. 
the financial impact of that risk to the insurance provider so and again the last one and the fourth one is to accept it's same like it's same for the positive and risk uh, negative risk accepting a negative risk means recognizing it but deciding not to take any specific action against it example like if there is a risk of minor de delays due to weather conditions you might accept it as it won't significantly affect your project timeline so these strategies aim to deal with potential negative events in a project by either avoiding them altogether or uh, reducing their impact or likelihood shifting the responsibility elsewhere or simply acknowledging and allowing them to occur without any additional intervention if the impact is like manageable uh, well this was a long topic to cover i hope these processes are clear to you now thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more insightful content until next time till then bye and take care